Hey everyone, we've made it to episode four of this series where I take you from start to finish while I create this brand new Excel add-in in 2019. In this episode, we're going to look back at some of the changes I've made since episode three to the user form. I've changed quite a bit since then, so we'll do some before and afters. I'll talk about some new features I came up with. We'll save all the ribbon user interface stuff for the next episode, just because I think we have a lot to go over in this episode. So I do have an initial ribbon user interface that we can see now. If I go and click this numbers tab, this is what I'm currently working with as of now. We've got a rules manager which will launch the user forms we were working on in the previous episodes. And then I have a bunch of number format buttons that we can use to apply various rules and number formats to. So I'm going to just walk through what the user forms look like and are doing now. So this is the uh, list manager where you can manage all your rules. You'll notice it looks a little bit different and I'll kind of put a before and after look up on the screen just so you can see what it looked like in episode three and what it looks like now. Um, you'll notice the look and feel of the user form uh, is a little bit more modern in my opinion than what uh, it used to look like. I stumbled across a screenshot of a user form that I believe belonged to the online version of Excel and I really liked how it looked. Uh, so it had this nice clean interface and it had uh, the ability to change to green whenever you hovered over a button. So I went to work and created user forms that follow that scheme. And I'll kind of show you a little bit of how these buttons work. But I really like the look and feel of this, and don't be surprised if this look and feel rolls out to some of my other add-ins in the future. So really what uh, we need to do to get this hover capability is I made two images of all the buttons. Um, so I have this uh, white and gray image and a green and white image. And I'm using the move mouse event to capture where the mouse is on the user form. So I'm using that event to trigger a switch of the images whenever the mouse comes into the range of the button. And at the same time, if it comes off the button, it's kind of resetting all those images. So there's only an instance where one green button can show at a time. So it's a pretty slick interface, I think, and um, it's not too hard to code, so I can show you a little bit of the coding here. You're really using two things. Uh, you're using the user form mouse move event, and that's going to kind of reset all your buttons to that white and gray view. That triggers whenever your mouse moves off a button. And then you're going to create a mouse move event for each button you have on your user form and kind of flip the visibility of that specific button on and all the other buttons off. So not too complicated. You just kind of have to account for all the different buttons on your user form. But I really like that and I incorporated that into all the user forms in this add-in. I think the only other change to this user form is I did add a copy button. Um, so I was running into issues or maybe more annoyances when I was creating some of these rules uh, to test them out. I was like, man, it would be really nice if I could take one of these rules and start with what I've already written or built and create a new rule. So that's what this copy button do does is it creates a new rule but carries over all the information that's in the selected rule. So let's now go to the other main user form in this add-in and that's where a lot of work took place over the past couple weeks. I'll just create a new rule and bring up that user form. So again I'll, I'll put the before view off to the side on the screen so you can see what this looked like before. A lot of changes to this user form it came out of uh, testing, uh, some idea generation, and just the overall look and feel what I wanted to do 
with this user form. So uh, probably the, the biggest thing that changed here was this number format section. If you remember before, we were just going to have one number format rule. I've added three, and what will happen is once uh, you start clicking the buttons, it will cycle through all three of these rules. Um, this idea really came about, I was essentially creating three of the same buttons, but just adding a decimal place to the rules. And I was like, I'm going to have a lot of duplicate buttons and buttons to manage. So I found a way that um, we could create cycle buttons where they'll cycle through three particular rules and that kind of collapses the amount of buttons you'll need on your ribbon. Um, so an example of this, if I type in a number here and if I hover over this dollar button, you can see in the description, click one, click two, and click three, it shows the different number formats rules that it's going to apply. And so if I click it the first time, uh, it changes to uh, no decimals. If I click it again, it changes to one decimal, then the two decimal, then it goes back to a general format or, or your reset number format, and then you can continue to cycle through. Um, so it just applies that to the selection of cells, and it's a really nice feature um, that I've really liked using as I've tested to just get those decimal places in the right place. So let's go back to that user form. Um, I've also kind of updated the buttons to pull in the number format from a cell. So uh, those can be used to do each of the three rules. And I've also moved the check and the X inside the uh, text box. So you can see when I start typing that check mark to verify that it's valid shows up inside the text box. And this is a little interesting exercise. I actually wrote a blog post because in order to make this look good with the size of the image inside the text box, I had to make these text boxes a little bit bigger than the normal text box. The problem with that is you can't middle align text box text. So I had to do a little trick to make it look like it was middle aligned even though organically it's not. And I'll put a link to that post in the video description, but just to kind of give you an idea of what I did, is I really have two text box controls uh, within each other. So I have this one where the text is actually getting entered, and I have this one that's actually showing. So I just took the borders off the small one and it's middle aligned to the bigger text box, and you can see I have my check and my X on top of each other over to the right. Note, I have this smaller text box shorter than the image, so there's no way you can run that text into your, your check or your X just to make it a little clean. So I did that for each one of these three, and it just makes it look a lot nicer. So if we go back again to the user form, added a couple of check boxes, and I, I believe I added this button label too. So one thing I wanted to do was have a unique ID which is how I'm tracking all these rules in the, the back end in that Excel table that I showed in pre prior episodes. But I also wanted to let users have the same label up in the ribbon. So you can see up in my example ribbon, I have divide by three times. Um, and adding this button label field allows you to do that. So I also added a checkbox to automatically have the label equal the format name if you want or you can uncheck it and uh, make them different so if I started typing in here I have uh, a change event that says if this checks box is checked um, make these two equal to, to each other when the user is typing in it another neat checkbox I put in was this auto gem generate description I have a just generic description that once you start typing in your number format rule, so if I just type in some zeros and stuff, you can see it is uh, just putting some generic text in here displaying what that number format rule is. If you don't like that, you can uncheck it and then go in and edit this. If you do like it, just keep it checked. And the nice thing is once you start filling out your second and third rule, it changes it to that 
click notation where it says the first click it's going to apply this number format the next click it's going to apply uh, the second format um, so that's really handy and that will save time as users are creating a lot of different formats and not having to worry about typing in specific description text the last thing I'll kind of go over is the the folder um, I have this working now so when I click that folder it's pointing to a folder that's going to have to be saved uh, in the same spot as where the add-in saved on the computer. Um, so that's how I know where that folder is going to be the whole time. And this is where users are going to store their icon libraries. So my plan is to make a bunch of different icons uh, with a bunch of different colors that are related to number formats. And the user can go in and, and save those to their computer and pick whatever icon they they like it want to show in the ribbon um, this is also great because it allows the user to put their own icons if they're into creating their own graphics they can do that as well and use their own icon sets in this add-in so if i click this percentage it just pulls in that file name and then on the back end i'll save that file name to this rule one more thing I wanted to go over while we're on this user form is just uh, a, a quick tip uh, that you want to pay attention to is the tab order of all your text box fields. This is something that I think is really important because a lot of people use the tab key to jump to the next uh, field. So you can see right now if I hit tab it goes to the next one. If I hit tab again it actually jumps down to this ribbon icon. So that is not good. Um, so what I'll need to do is jump into my VBA editor and I can control uh, the order of the, the tabs by going into the properties of each one of my controls and fixing that tab index number. So in this case, I'd want this one to be my first, so I'll have it be one. I can go in here to the next one, make that tab index 2, and then come here because I want that to be the next one, make that tab index 3, and so on. Um, so I won't bore you with fixing everything, but that's something that can get overlooked sometimes when you're building these user forms out. Another neat thing I added to uh, this user form is the ability to double click to edit. This was something when I was testing I just naturally did and was like oh I can't do that. Um, so I did a little bit of research and there is an event that uh, if you double click in, in the list box I can trigger the same code that would trigger if I hit this edit button. So if I wanted to go and edit this percent rule I can double click it and it opens up nice and easy for me. Um, so that rule is right here where it says list box underscore double click and you can see the code is just calling the edit button click subroutine so I'm mimicking the user clicking the edit button on the user form so another easy short little code that I incorporate in there just to give the user experience some efficiency one last thing while I'm in this code I do want to cover is another thing a lot of people don't think about is their users using multiple screens and unfortunately with user forms uh, Excel doesn't always pop up the user form in the same window or the same screen as the Excel file is currently on what this little bit of code does and I always stick that in the user form initialize at the beginning is it just opens up the user form and it puts it smack dab in the middle of the application the active act application um, so it's always going to guarantee that your user form is opening up in the screen that your user is going to expect it to so it's just three lines of code right there I'll put a link to that code as I have it on my website in the video notes and that's a nice little handy thing to always incorporate into your user forms. 
And finally, I'm just gonna show you what the current state of my drafting spreadsheet looks like. So you can see uh, it used to look like this, a nice and clean uh, roadmap to what I wanted to build. And now it just looks like a complete mess, but you can see I've made a bunch of those buttons to paste into my user form. I've pasted in icons and, and various things. It gets a little bit messy as I kind of get into the, the whole process of making the uh, the look and feel of the user forms the way I want, but it is worth it in the end for sure. And also while I, I'm looking at the home tab, I'm gonna put a feature in my settings to where uh, we can replace the number group on the home tab and, and put this kind of summarized button view of this add-in in its place. And the thought is to have a small footprint on your home tab because a lot of people keep that home tab open and use a lot of the buttons on it already. And I expect this add-in to have high usage with a lot of people. So just bringing in the buttons, forcing the buttons to not have labels is gonna be key. I don't want this to take up a lot of space on the home tab. Uh, so they'll have to rely on uh, icon color and then hovering over and getting that description. But I mean, eventually they're just going to know what buttons do uh, what number formats uh, just by muscle memory. So I think it's going to be a nice little feature to have. I'll have a toggle in the settings that will allow them to do that and, or allow them not to. So I'm not imposing any changes to the home tab if it's unwanted, but I think that's going to be a nice little feature to add in as well. So I'll end it there. Uh, in the next episode, like I said before, we'll kind of get into how I'm doing a lot of the stuff on the ribbon, how I'm getting all these dynamic descriptions and throwing the icons up there and uh, a whole lot of fun stuff in the next episode. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.